I'm back today responding to more comments on my TikTok account. If you didn't know I've got a TikTok account, you can find me over on TikTok here. Let's dive in and see what questions I'm being asked and give you the answers. Okay, so this is on a video about contacting employees and employees making contact if they are off sick. And this person said, where are you getting this from? You do not need to discuss with a line manager. What if they are the problem? Okay, so let's start with where am I getting it from? 20 years of HR experience master's degree, chartered CIPD qualification. Kind of do know what I'm talking about, but I'm open to be questioned and I'm open to have discussions with people around what is or isn't right and what we should be doing and where we can change things as well. So they've said here that you do not need to discuss with a line manager what if they are the problem. Okay, now, if somebody goes off sick, and in fact, any work-related issue, the line manager should be the person that is dealing with it, not somebody else, right? The line manager is the everyday person that manages this person and is their support, provides them with any, make sure they get any training resources that they need, sets their objectives. The, this is the line manager. If somebody else comes in and starts doing those things, that's gonna undermine that relationship. So it absolutely should be a line manager that is the person who's making most of the contact when somebody is off sick. It may be in really long-term sickness cases that sometimes that does move to a, a HR person. I prefer it to be the line manager with guidance from HR. I still think that's the best way because the line manager is where the relationship should be. However, this commenter also says, what if they are the problem? And this is really key. I have said in other responses to questions in other videos, no good relationship is going to be built while somebody is off sick. And that is absolutely true. This is not where you're going to build your good relationship with your employee. And yes, it is correct that many times absence will be the result of the line manager and the line manager being a problem. This therefore means you need to raise this as an employee. So you need to tell somebody that the line manager is a problem. If you can, and sometimes in small businesses you just can't, and sometimes that means your only option is to leave the employer. If the line manager is causing you a problem and there is nobody to talk to, no way to get it resolved, then finding a different employer is, is your only option and the best option for you personally, because it isn't just about business. This is about individuals. You're not in slaves to a business. You are there by choice to get paid to do a job. If the line manager is a problem and there is somebody else you can talk to, somebody more senior, another line manager, somebody in HR, go and report it, talk to them, explain that they are the problem and make an agreement that that's who you will have contact with in order to get this resolved. But nothing is going to resolve. If you go off sick and just refuse to talk to your line manager and don't talk to anybody else, nothing's going to get resolved. And in fact, it's gonna end up with letters going out, meetings happening without you being present because you're not engaging in communication. Equally as a business, so my advice to employers is, is if you've got somebody who's not engaging and you've got hints that there might be a line manager issue, even the smallest of hints, then get somebody else to try and make contact and see if you can resolve the issue. Issues are never going to be resolved by stonewalling each other and not talking to each other and not telling people what's going on. Clear communication is always going to be what's needed. So yes, the line manager should be taking responsibility for making sure that there is regular contact with the employee for reasons I've discussed in many other videos about why this is so important to a business. Equally, yes, if an employee has an issue with a line manager, if the issue is the line manager, that needs to be reported to somebody. And as a business, that needs to be taken seriously because it's now causing you a problem. If you've now got, as a business, got an absence where somebody is now off work and not available to you, you've now got to manage that. You've got to either try and get them back to work or you may end up in a dismissal. If you end up in a dismissal and you've not dealt with this issue, that's gonna cause you problems. This, this is a messy situation. If you've got to this point where somebody's had to go off sick because the line manager is causing that many problems, it's a really messy situation and possibly a sign there's a cultural problem that the individual couldn't raise it before they got to the point of going off sick and not wanting to communicate with anyone. And as I say, I've said it before, good relationships are not gonna be built once somebody's gone off sick. We need to make sure those relationships are built prior to that 
to avoid these things from happening. Forgive the quick interruptions of this video and I will keep it really quick. If you've liked this video, found it useful, you can of course hit the subscribe button, but I also want to tell you about our digital courses. In our digital courses, I go into much more detail. The videos are very similar to these. It's me, it's on camera, but there's also downloads, there's sample forms, there's a few sample policies in there as well. All the things that you need to know. We've even got some coming where we've got live classes as well. So check out our digital courses. Details are on screen now and in the description below. Look forward to seeing you on one of our courses in the future. And in the meantime, I'll let you get back to the video. Okay, let me move on to the next comment. This is a really good question and it does relate to employment law and the legal status of holidays and being sick. So if somebody is long-term sick, four years for example, that's a long time to be long-term sick, will they accrue 20 days statutory holiday per year or do they expire or not accrue at all? Really good question. And this is exactly why I say to employers, you need to manage sickness absence and why it's probably not reasonable to have somebody who's off sick for this long. Four years is a long time. The chances of them ever coming back into work, I mean, especially the last four years, if it is this situation, but any set of four years, the job's going to have changed. There's a lot that's going to have changed. So yes, four years I really would be trying to avoid somebody being off sick for four years. And one of the reasons being is, yeah, they accrue their holiday. This person said they're for uh, their 20 days statutory holiday. Now, statutory holiday is actually 5.6 weeks, which is 28 days for somebody who works five days a week. However, when it comes to accrual during long-term absence, the working time regulations limit that to the 20 days, the first 20 days. The employment contract may say different, so we'd have to check the employment contract, but it's only the 20 days that are going to accrue um, as a statutory accrual. But yes, they do continue to accrue and somebody is entitled to take that time. They can request to take that holiday whilst they are sick. So if they are not getting paid or they're on statutory sick pay, for example, they may well want to take that holiday in order to get full pay for those 20 days, four weeks it is. So if somebody's part-time, obviously it's gonna be pro rata. If they are not allowed to take that holiday, if the employer says no to taking that holiday, or they don't take it, then it can be carried over and they should take it on their return to work. Now this person obviously hasn't returned to work or isn't looking likely to return to work, so I'll come back to that. In terms of preventing somebody or saying no to holiday, now managers, employers can say no to holiday in line with a holiday policy, where it doesn't fit the needs of the business. If you've got too many staff already off, for example, you could say no to holiday. If somebody's already off sick, then it's gonna be hard to justify as an employer why you'd be able to say no to any holiday because it's not gonna have any different impact or on the business. Even if you've already got five people off on holiday and you can't accommodate a sixth in the workplace, this person's off anyway. So it's not gonna, it's going to be really hard to justify saying no to it. It's also not in the employer's interest because if you've got somebody who's on long-term sick, when they come back to work, you don't want them to have loads of holidays to take. You want them to come back to work. So let people take their holiday whilst they're off sick. But yeah, this person would have been able to take it for each, each of those years. There is, however, a caveat to that, which is that the carryover holiday will expire after 18 months. So that means that 18 months after the end of the holiday year, that holiday will no longer be available. So that holiday will be available to be taken when somebody returns whilst they're off sick or to be paid if their employment is terminated, but that will stop 18 months after the end of the holiday year. So if somebody is off sick for four years, that first year, 18 months after the end of that holiday year, that will expire. So that would have now expired for this four years person. Year two will have also expired because we'll have gone over 18 months, but year three, holiday accrual will still be there as will year four. So they've got eight weeks of holiday available to take because they've been off for four years and they'll continue to accrue that. They can either ask to take it whilst they are off sick or they can be paid it when they are terminated, if they're terminated, probably likely in this situation. I find it hard to imagine a case where somebody will come back to work after that long or they can take it on their return to work if they do return. 
Don't forget to check out my digital course, HR for non-HR managers. You can access it now, details on screen and in the description below. If you're still watching at this point, thank you for watching. Check out these videos, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next week.